for my name, as you said, Michel Stockfish. Uh, I am I work for Ransat Sourceright, um, and in for Ransat Sourceright, I am responsible for our global talent innovation center. With Ransat Sourceright, we focus uh, specifically on uh, high volume firm hiring, as we call RPO. And at the other side, we also focus on uh, high volume contingent hiring called MSP. I think many organizations are still very traditional in their looking at, hey, I need to hire firm uh, employees or I need to hire temp uh, or contractors. Uh, I think specifically when you look at the, uh, uh, the, the gig population or the, uh, the, the, the people, the, the younger workforce, uh, I think many organizations are not really yet sufficiently trying to understand what the needs are of these people. I think there is a rapidly growing population of uh, knowledgeable workers who in essence are not really interested, at least for a certain period in their life, to work as a perm employee for an organization. Um, they on purposely are pursuing a career as a independent contractor or a freelancer or a gig worker, depending on what label you put on there, because that's what they want to do. That's what they desire. It's driven by themselves. It's driven by uh, their peers. Um, and that may mean that they want to work somewhere for six months and then they want to disappear for a year. I still see few organizations that are not adjusting them themselves to also tap into that pool of resources. Partially because they still believe that they can still fulfill the needs with other sources like perm hiring or outsourcing or um, and again, if I look to the rapidly evolving scarcity of certain skill sets, I think every organization needs to rethink that, that specific element. That they need to uh, define and implement also a, a recruitment approach strategy or an engagement strategy. How can they as an organization build up a maintaining long lasting relationship with this population of freelancers and gig workers? Um, if I look to the trends that I, and the data that I see is that it is not unlikely that in five to 10 years from now, an average organization for 30 to 40% of its total workforce will be uh, containing people that are not permanent. Um, so that, that's a big number. Uh, it's way bigger than we've ever seen it in the past. Um, and I would say as not to an organization, make sure that you address and spend time on this, this topic and try to articulate your go to marketing your strategy around it. I think first of all, technology as such is, uh, is rapidly uh, uh, becoming available uh, on many different areas. So we probably all hear and see around things like artificial intelligence and machine learning and chatbot technologies. Um, if you look at those uh, technologies, then I think they bring value on a few different layers. One is, that typically help to uh, drive uh, uh, effectiveness and efficiency. Uh, they for sure help also to improve and have an impact, a positive impact on uh, the, the experience, both the hiring manager experience, but also the candidate experience. Um, and as we know in a market where uh, talent is becoming scarce, it really helps us to maximize the opportunity to find the right skill set the right person for a certain vacancy. I definitely see uh, the, uh, the agenda item of technology uh, uh, rapidly uh, moving up the, the list of priorities. Uh, so if I, the typical HR interaction or discussion I have or a meeting I have with an HR executive, the technology element probably was not so prevalent in that discussion four or five years ago. Nowadays, it is probably in every uh, discussion, in every uh, uh, dialogue, it's, it's there. Um, and that's partially driven by the HR technology industry itself. And they are also broadcasting what they can do to the world. Um, but also what I see is that the HR function itself um, is becoming more critical within organizations and with that also the distance that maybe there used to be a number of years ago is diminishing between HR uh, and finance and uh, CIO uh, and the, the key business leaders since every business owner every business leader 
is starting to understand the uh, the critical nature and the critical need to as much as they can really integrate with the HR organization and the HR team to fulfill not just the needs that they have today, but probably more important also to fill the, the needs that they will have in six months and 12 months from now. And it's driven by scarcity, it's driven by aging workforce population, um, the younger generations that are entering the labor market with very distinct and very unique needs and behaviors. Um, creates also a must change uh, attitude that I definitely experience in interacting with um, uh, senior HR leaders in, uh, in ar around the world. Um, at the same time, it also brings a bit of a challenge since as an HR expert, uh, then all of a sudden we are also required to start starting to understand the world of HR technology. Um, so it brings an additional dimension to the table. Um, and that's something we do see still from time to time is that uh, as an organization, then the risk is that you end up with a selection of different unique technologies, an ATS system or CRM system, workforce planning technologies or um, chat technologies. But the question then also is how can you really integrate this into a uh, valuable workflow and a best practice workflow that really allows you as an organization to better attract and engage with talent in the market better than anybody else. If I look to some of the conferences that you have out there, eh, like an uh, HR tech conference, which is already for many years one of the most known um, um, uh, opportunities to really see and meet and interact with kind of the global landscape around HR technology, Again, if I go back five years and I look now, then there's a significant higher percentage of people that are uh, going there are pure HR executives, um, where it used to be more maybe the IT uh, specialists. Uh, so I think there's, just, there's a lot of that is going on. Uh, also research, many organizations are tapping in specific research, uh, either from a staffing industry analyst or an Everest or a, a Burson, um, and every piece of research that you look and, and the, the surveys being done, we also do our own annual survey um, amongst the chief uh, executives, including chief HR uh, executives. You always see a significant growth year over year in uh, the awareness and the need to uh, not just look at the HR function, but also look at the, the, the technology ecosystem that, that surrounds it. Um, and that means that where many people still might think that, hey, let me look at a workday application as the core technology platform that will definitely bring value. But I think many more already start to see that there are so many additional technologies that on top of a workday uh, can really bring value to an organization. Well, I think the starting point should always be your, uh, your current um, uh, people uh, uh, image, the current footprint you have, um, and number of people, in what jobs, uh, what skill sets do you currently employ, um, but also uh, some of the data elements that are around there, like uh, staff turnover, uh, aging workforce, uh, pension uh, ages, um, so that, that, that's one big piece. Then the second piece, and that's, this is more the business strategy itself, is where is the organization heading towards in the next right. two, three years. Uh, and if you have these two next to each other, you start to understand the size of the challenge that's ahead. In a certain case, it might be that it's more to, uh, that from an HR recruitment perspective, it's more around replacing people that most likely will be leaving either due to natural uh, turnover or to uh, people that go on retirement um, but you would need to replace them with the same skill sets um, so that's one scenario but what I definitely see here happening also with the rapidly changes in economies and uh, is that the, the the nature of an organization is changing rapidly so it means that uh, and let me take an example an, an IT de department might be completely um, built up on people with a certain programming language experience and skill set, it could very well be that in a year or two from now, you as an organization are also going to potentially change from uh, to another IT architecture. Um, understanding those changes and those transformations is becoming critical. Um, 
if you have that, then what I would call the next step is to think about an HR technology architecture. So if I understand where my organization is today from a people footprint and where it should be in 24 months or 36 months, it starts to show me the delta. Um, from With that delta in my hand, I can translate it to uh, things like attraction. How do I attract then the people that I need to start hiring? How can I engage with those people? Uh, maybe for an open vacancy, but also longer term, maybe for vacancies that may happen in the future. Um, from an, an, an attraction and engagement, I can also translate it to um, things like recruitment on the, on the labor market and use things like uh, job boards. And, uh, but I can also look at, for instance, internal mobility. What, what percentage of those roles do I think I can fill with people from out of the internal organization? Mm -hmm. um, uh, re re references and think about how, how strongly a reference uh, platform may, may help. On the contingent side, it might also allow me to think about how can I best tap into uh, workforce uh, populations like freelancers. Um, um, and by really understanding the gap that I need to close, I can then translate it to where what is the most likely source or mix of sources that I will need to turn on to really guarantee or maximize the opportunity to fulfill the needs in 12, 24 or 36 months. I think if you have that HR um, architecture that starts you also then to think about technology solutions and gaps that you may have that help to fulfill the needs across uh, attraction and engagement and, and ultimately the hiring uh, process. We should not underestimate the power of, for instance, AI, uh, but the same would apply, for instance, for a technology like blockchain. Um, at the same time, what we do see happening in the market is that these are becoming buzzwords. So what you always will see is that there are many technology players that are releasing uh, technologies and they just label them AI and blockchain. And um, if you really peel the onion and really look deep on what it is and what value it brings, then Quite often, I would say it's not using AI or blockchain or some of these newer technical frameworks. Uh, at best, it's really kind of a very light version. And if we do our job well, uh, it would uh, uh, allow us to reuse some of the time that today we may spend in sourcing and, and, and searching for candidates to either bring more value to that candidate, uh, um, him or herself, or to turn more value into uh, supporting the hiring manager and the client. If we do our job well by using these technologies, it gives us also time to spend, or spend more time, for instance, on analyzing um, uh, all the data that we have available um, and use those insights again to give more proactive and strategic advice to clients, not just on the job that they may have today, but for instance, the jobs that we can expect that will kick in next week or the week after. It's, uh, well, I think the Uberization is a terminology also that you quite often see happening. I think the, um, you know, the two examples that are probably known by many, it's, it's Uber that have more or less revolutionized the world of the, 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 the taxi right. industry. Um, but same would apply for an Airbnb, which in essence, it's the biggest hotel chain in the world without owning one hotel room. Um, so they have really been able to uh, bring big changes to, to the, the hotel uh, industry. Um, <clears throat> what we see happening in the staffing space is also a magnitude of uh, technology innovations, new startups that are creating kind of digital uh, intermediaries. Um, uh, trying to really connect the need from organizations directly with readily available talent out of the market. Um, very dominant at the moment is specifically in the gig world. Uh, if you, you look at freelance or independent contractor platforms. Um, um, so yeah, this, this is impacting the staffing industry. Um, and that's also how we approach it in the ways that we say, well, let's make sure that if we, if the industry is being disrupted, Let's make sure that we are one of the disruptors and really are in the front row 
trying to look at new technologies and how can we deploy it in such a way that it brings value to all the stakeholders, uh, the candidates, the talent. We do believe that there's not going to be a world where it's only technology. We absolutely believe in what we call uh, a, a tech and touch uh, strategy. So really use the technologies and the technology capabilities that it brings at best to drive the value and to drive the value for candidates and clients. And at the same time, make sure that also one of the ways to differentiate is really what we call then the touch element. How can we also, in the interaction with our clients uh, and candidates, maximize the value for them? Um, and if we can free up time by using technology, what can we do to really bring more value, different value, new value to our clients and to our candidates um, whether that, that that is in, in advice to a candidate like really let me be the your career counsel coach to really help you progress to your next job or to the hiring manager where we will be able to help this organization to not only be ready for next week but also for the future after next next week um, and I think that combination is definitely there mm -hmm.